Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them all on. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey, oh, yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I was talking with my wife, and she said something her father always used to tell her. Just because you can do something don't mean you should do it. I can't tell you how many times I've had to learn that in my life. You know, just because you can do something does not necessarily mean you should do it. I could tell people off oftentimes but it don't mean I should do it. I could go here and set the record straight a lot of times, but it don't mean I should do it. Well, I've learned a lot in that lesson, folks. And because I have a relationship with my creator, what it's done is it's allowed me to learn even more how to stay still on a lot of issues that's troubling me. I've learned it the hard way. I do want you to understand that that sometimes it's better to be still. Sometimes it's better to just let God handle the situation. Now, and I know it's hard to say because we think as people, but if I do this, I would feel better. If I do this, now they'll feel how I feel. See, but that's not always the best way, though, I've found in my life. Sometimes you got to, like old people used to say, you got to let go and let God. I'm going to tell you something, man. I learned a lot from my mother being a Sunday school teacher. But, you know, at the same time, when she was when I was young, I thought she was just an old, old person just talking to me. I didn't get it. You know how your parents used to talk to you and you didn't get it. And they used to always say, well, wait till you have your own kids. You will get it then. And sure enough, you got it then. Well, I'm the same way. I'm no different. You know, I don't have no different life than you. You know, I have no different upbringing than you. I don't have no different ways that I can live and you can't. You know, I got to live by the same laws of the land that you got to live by. I got to obey the principles of success. If I want to be successful, I got to bam. And, you know, and if I want to go to heaven, I got to do what God tell me to do as many times as I can. Now, you ain't going to get it all right, but he understand that. And I just get on with the best I can. But so many times, man, we get stuck right there, man. Worrying about, you know, how, how it's going to come across and, and what I'm, you know, you know, I'm kind of going around here because I'm trying to find a way to tell you this, that you won't get twisted. The bottom line, you got to let go and let God. You have to allow him to do it his way. See, I thought myself to a certain point, but to go further, I had to let God have it. I found out I wasn't all that good a driver. I found out I wasn't all that good of a explorer with a map. So I had to let go. I had to let God. And you got to understand that God works in mysterious ways. How often had I thought it was over for me 
But what God was doing was he was teaching me a lesson. He was showing me something that I needed to know. He was allowing me to experience some things, but he didn't let me go under. You know how they say God will never put more on you than you can bear? He won't let you go under. You know, it's like the scripture that Bishop Ulmer taught me when I was going through that traumatic thing on the Internet, man. It was really, really, man, trying to destroy what I had worked for and my family and this new life that God had presented me. And the devil is busy. The devil don't like to see you happy. So here he comes. He puts you under attack. And here comes the Internet and everything. And my kids are suffering. But, you know, here, here comes God, though. See, God don't put more on you than you can bear. And Bishop Omer sent me a scripture. He sent me Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. And in that scripture, it says to the effect that you can walk through the waters, the rivers, and the water won't overcome you. But then it said you can walk through the fire and you will not get burned, nor will kindling set upon your clothing. I learned something very valuable that day. See, God sent me through something, but he was showing me something too. Now, he didn't do it. God didn't bring that calamity into my life because in Isaiah 54, 17, it says clearly that if anyone comes against you, it will not be my doing. Now, this is what he promised you when people come for you, though. See, and this is what I learned. That's why I have no fear of the people coming anymore, because I learned that. But God had to send me through a traumatic experience in order for me to learn that. You can't have a testimony without a test. You know what I'm saying? You can't learn nothing without a lesson. So what he did was he allowed that Internet thing come across into my life. But he taught me something. And Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 was, and you can walk through the fire and not get burned, nor will kindling set upon your clothing. So what that said to me was, even though you're trying to do me and there's fire all around me, I won't burn. But when it's over, kindling won't set upon your clothing. What that showed me was, not only will I walk through the fire and not get burned, but there will be no signs that I was ever in the fire. There's no signs of it. But now hold up, though. Now, here go the part, though, that I had to learn. Even though you can walk through the fire, y'all, and even though you're being flames and scorching all around you, if you trust him, he ain't going to let you burn. But now hear what he did not say, though. He did not say that it was not going to be uncomfortably hot wickedly hot in there. He ain't say that. He just said you won't burn. And when it's over, it won't be no signs that you was in the fire. See, what happened to me was after they tried to destroy me, let me show you what God did for me. Not only did they not accomplish what they set out to do, but when they was through with me, though, when they was through throwing the gas and throwing the fire and throwing the hate and writing it and lying and creating all these names for themselves so it could look like more people was hating when they got through with all that man look what he did to me look what he did for me because he taught me something that day and i'm sharing it with you because god will do the same thing for you but you got to trust him though you got to get in there and you got to let him do it you got to let him handle it so just like pop bridge is taught my wife Marjorie, just because you can do something don't mean you ought to do something yeah you could go down there and straighten them out but should you though yeah, you can go down there and tell them off. Yeah, you can go down and stand up and make sure they know it's your voice that they hear it. And you can get in their face and make a scene. But should you, though, or should you let go and let God? So before we run all out in the streets and somebody go out there and do something crazy, let's hold tight. Now, I'm not saying don't go out there, but you got to watch who you go out there with. But you can go down there with peace in your heart. Somebody decide, I'm going to throw a brick through here and bust a window. Hold up, partner. Hold up, that ain't what we're down here doing. So, see, sometimes, man, you got to let go and you got to let God. You got to let God have a situation sometimes. And you get in there and do the things that he tell you to do. See, Bishop Oman had taught me a lot. He had another book out and he said, uh, you know, Knowing God's Voice or something like that. I'm not sure of the title. But I never really knew the definition of how do you know it's God's voice talking to you? Well, he clearly made a statement. God's voice has no sin in it. Whenever you talk about, I'm going to go, I'm going to show him, I'm going to get him back. If it's sin in it, God ain't in it. See, that's you now. God's voice has no sin in it. So when you say, God told me, be careful, because God ain't never told you to go do nothing wrong. That ain't what he told you. And I learned that too. It's a lot. So I'm just sharing today. I hope it helps somebody today get through a difficult time because the show has helped me. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It is Thursday, baby. You heard what I said. It's Thursday. It's the nephew holding it down. Uncle Steve is out, but me and the beautiful ladies and Junior are in. That would be Shirley Strawberry, Carla Farrell, Mississippi Monica, and Kia Junior Boy Space. Let me tell y'all what I did this morning. Oh, my God. Got up and and got into a warm plunge. You hear me? A warm plunge. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I don't I don't cold plunge Why? like on the Steve. I got you in eighty a, degrees of water. Just, That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Take a shower. <gasps> yeah, yeah, just yeah. lay down. <laughs> yeah, and I felt so rejuvenated. It don't have to be cold, y'all. It don't have to be cold. I got in there and all whatever he doing in that cold, I did it in the warm and it works out just the same. I can assure you that. <laughs> you can assure me. I'm nobody about sitting that, in there for okay. no five minutes in no thirty degree water. I, I got it up to eighty and I felt really nice. I really did. You was in there twenty minutes, wasn't you? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> top, top. It is Thursday, man. We holding it down. Steve Harvey morning show. And we're going to be a little ignorant, a little, a little uh, informative. And, you know, I, and then I, I lay back when we get informed. And when it's stupid, I kick back in. And then, yeah. <laughs> You're all over you the place. <laughs> yeah. With your warm bath, your warm plunge. Man, y'all should try that warm plunge. 80 degrees. Uh-huh. And get you a couple little drops of alcohol, put it in there, you know. Um, oh, you know, alcohol. That, you meant to drink. Yeah, that green alcohol. That green alcohol. That's something. That one's not different. Uh-huh. And it, you know, if you're aching anywhere, it helps out. A little Epsom salt, put some of that in there. Mm-hmm. All that cold mm-hmm. plunge, that's overrated that Uncle Steve be talking. Y'all be listening to Uncle Steve too much. Oh, that's overrated. NFL and the athletes that that do that all the time. I don't you know don't? why they do that. Girl. I don't know why they do that. It I don't know why they put all that ice in it. it all that inflammation. Get what? what? Waking you up. You know, getting everything working. You know, waking up everything. That's what it. Helps. That's what that hot water did. To, look at how I sound this morning. Look at that's what that's what that hot water did to me. I walked right on up. What? <laughs> You when you crazy. try to sit your butt in that hot water, don't it get you up? Don't it? Don't it? Don't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We like it hot, too. Yeah, we, we yes, like women, it hot. Yeah. We love mm-hmm. it hot. Yes, mm-hmm. we do. Who was the first one to, to, to discover how Epsom salt worked? Who the first person did that? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was, uh, that was Johnny Epsom. Yeah. That did that. Epson. Listen to the name of the stuff, boy. He said Johnny Epson. <laughs> yeah. Johnny put that salt in there. He was feeling real bad. He put it in the tub and put it in there and, and it started working out really, really well. And yeah. everybody said, Who did that? Johnny did that. That's Johnny that's that's Epson. That's Johnny salt. That's Epson salt. Yeah, that's that's Johnny Epson salt. So yeah, we've been that's where that come from. When they you know, later they added all the lavender flavors and all that. But at the beginning yeah. it was just yeah. it was just Johnny Epson. <laughs> That's Johnny yeah. Epson salt. If that's what you want to know, I got history for you, Junior. I know about yeah, I all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you now? Yeah. yeah. Now Epson. you know, Junior. If now you we don't know. know. Now you know. <laughs> so, Junior, quit listening to Uncle Steve all the time. I'm probably more of a mentor You're to you than him. <laughs> I'm a better mentor for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, can, right. I can really show you the way. Yeah, on that note, we're going to pivot. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear yet again from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. Nephew, what you got? Well, you know what it is, Shirley. We uh, we went down to the church yesterday and we talked about church yes. fees. And we are going to go back there and run that prank back again on church fees because we've got some people members that really need to learn about what it takes to be a part of this church all right all minds clear all right church fees cat dog if you would church fees let me hear Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Sister Tracy. Hey, you got her. Hey. Uh, how you doing? This is uh, this is Brother Glenn from the church. Hey, Brother Glenn. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. Uh, did you enjoy service this morning? Oh, I I enjoyed it. Pastor, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Pastor brought it down. Yes, he did. Day. Yes, he did. Oh my God, that was a word for me. Right, 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 right. So, what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Uh, I wanted to give you some information that the. Um, that the church has come up with, and we wanted to 
let you know what was going on before next Sunday. You, I, I didn't interrupt you, did I? Uh, no, no. I actually, uh, I, I may sound a little, little off a little bit. I'm trying to, to get dinner ready for my little babies, my little darlings, and I'm trying to. Your voice sounds so familiar to me. It just sounds so familiar. I'm trying to place place that voice. Okay. Well, you've seen me at the church quite a few times. I think I have. I'm just trying to place it. I, I can't place it right now. But what can, okay. what can I do, okay. for Glenn? Well, nevertheless, I, I just wanted. Here's here's what's going on. Uh, now, are you aware that for the last uh, the last six Sundays you've been actually uh, coming into service late? Have you realized that? Yes, I I, um, I, I know. I, I, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I, you know, yes, I have. I have my reasons, though. Okay, okay. Well, here's what's going on. The officials at the church have uh, gotten together, and this is what they've decided on: is that anybody who is late uh, starting next Sunday, there will be a fifteen dollar charge for that. For coming in and disrupting service, uh, and fast, ho- ho- fastest, fastest tired of service being disrupted by people walking in late. That that could not come at a worse time. I don't have fifteen dollars to give. No, I don't. I don't have it. Oh, um, look. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we're late. I I, I am. Uh, we we are doing our best. I, I have three kids. I have three young kids. Two, seven, and nine, and they are a handful. And, and, and we, we do the best that we can to get to church on time. And, and to tell you the truth, when we get there, it's during praise and worship. I mean, Pastor ain't even preaching yet. So okay. I know it's not, Pastor's not up yet, but he's, he's stating that, uh, people coming in, it just seems very disruptive to the service that's going on. That's, so nevertheless, like I said, this is a warning call, you know, to let you know that if you are late on next Sunday, then they, they will be charging you $15. Uh, a late charge, and, and actually, you won't be able to even come in what? until you uh, until you pay the fifteen dollars. I can't even get in church with with look. Okay, okay, look, I don't, I don't owe nothing. I don't owe you no explanation. But I need to tell you something. We are me and my kids for the last few Sundays that we've been late. It's because my car broke down. We we are on the bus, man. Public transportation. Okay. I mean, I, and I understand. I understand. I, I sympathize with everything that you're going through. But why are you calling? If you understand, why are you calling me about fifteen dollars? If you understand what I'm going through. Well, I didn't. I, first of all, I didn't know what you were going. Why are you raising your voice at me? What? Why are you raising? Did you just raise your voice at me? You know what? You know what? I think you're raising your voice at me. How dare you call me about this? About a fee? And I'm there at church. I got my kids in there trying to raise them up in the way they should go, just like the Bible say. And you know why I got to do this and why I'm late, why, why we got to catch the bus. Do you understand why that is, Brother Ben? No, I do not. That is because they, so their daddies ain't uh, and uh, they, yeah. So, so Tracy, just, you, you got to calm down a little bit now. Uh, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Okay, listen, uh, here's the deal. All I can do is tell you this. I hope you can make it. Maybe you can catch an earlier bus. You know what I mean, and get there a little earlier. But but I'm just stating the facts that as of next Sunday, if you come in late, it's fifteen dollar late fee, and that's what you'll pay in order to get in the service. You know what? Well, maybe next Sunday I just won't be there. How about that? You know, I'm already working six days a week. The only day I have off is Sunday. I'm breaking breaking my back. Do you know I work two jobs? I work two jobs, and they always trying to take money out of my check, always trying to pull me here and there, and I'm always tired. I get two hours of sleep, and then now the church wants to dump another $15 charging me for being at church when that's what I'm supposed to do? But you're coming in late, though, Sister Tracy. You, you know what? You know what? Late ain't bad, okay? I, I might be delayed, but I ain't denied, and I'm getting there the best way that I know how. We're on the bus. I have to put my kids on the school bus. And not only do I have to put them on the school bus, then I have to get on the bus myself to work because I don't have a car because their daddies ain't doing nothing, nothing for them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I need to under... Daddy daddy number one, guess what? He ain't Daddy number two, he in jail, been there about five years. He ain't And daddy number three, he decided to go ahead and walk out. He ain't, I ain't heard from that that trifling in about seven months. Now, he know we're struggling. He had the nerve to take my wallet, too. You don't, you don't even understand what I'm going through. You don't even understand that I'm trying to make a better life for me and my children. There is one more thing, Sister Tracy, that the church wants you to know before next Sunday that you definitely need to know. And what one more thing does the church want me to know besides $15? The church just wants you to know that this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your sister Patrice got me to prank phone call you. 
I am going to whoop her. I'm going to whoop her. I'm going to whoop her. Are you? She know I ain't got time for that. She know I ain't got time for that. Oh, Patrice. Uh-huh. Yeah, girl, uh-huh. your sister got you. You all right? Oh, I got something for her. How about that? <laughs> she wanted to put a smile on your face. <laughs> I'm going to have to say she did. Okay. You all right? Wow. Now that I know you, y'all were joking, and now I know this is nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to ask you something, baby. What's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to tell me how good it is. You ain't got to tell me. I'll be back in another hour without doing it again. You ain't got to you tell me. You already know. What? What? Okay. What? 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the Riddolo and uh, Junior. Riddolo, of course, stands for Ready to Love Officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Beyonce gave VP Kamala Harris permission to use her song Freedom during her campaign speech. Uh, Celine, Celine Dion is back. Thank the Lord. Celine Dion is back. She will perform during the opening ceremonies at the Olympics. And yeah. Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Snoop Dogg will too. carry the Olympic torch. And the free iHeartRadio app has all of your Olympic coverage. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the Riddolo and Junior. This is from uh-uh. Kelvin in Sarasota. Kelvin says, I can't stand my girlfriend because she's evil and takes me for granted. She was sick, so I felt obligated to stay while she needed my help. Um... Her doctor has cleared her to go back to work. So how much longer should I stay? Is one week enough? <laughs> if the Elvis. doctor didn't clear her, you need to clear your cell phone out. Yeah. You're fine now. <laughs> if, you re- if your mind is already set that you're leaving her and you did the gentleman thing and hung around a little bit to make sure she was all right, she's been cleared. <laughs> clear your stuff out that house and get on out of there. You'd, you've done your duty and you manned up. So I'm proud of you. But you can go now. You can you're free to move about the country. <laughs> Freedom Junior. papers? Is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are free to move about the country. Junior? <laughs> I don't agree with that, Tommy, because as a sick person, I need you as long as I need you. <laughs> nah. I need you like a couple of extra days. I don't care how evil I am. I- I'm sick. You're being, di- you're being disrespectful now. Sir. Yeah, I see? need you to don't, don't just jump up because the doctor cleared me. I'm still sick. Right. Uh-huh. Stay as long as you need to. Okay. All right. So more than a week then. You're going to always be sick, though. You're going to always be sick. Yeah, I know that, Tommy. But the point I'm saying is I still need you. The point is you don't just (laughs) jump up because I can walk. You don't need to do that. Don't leave. No, 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 no. The point is you need a new caretaker. That's the point. Yeah. You need somebody else. Yeah. You need a nurse. I serve my time. Yeah. <laughs> she's been cleared from the doctor. He's been there a week. He already says she's evil and he can't stand her. Oh, and don't and don't let bedpans be involved. Oh, oh God, no. no. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. All right, so Junior, you're you're not on board with this. All right, no. we're going to move on. This is from Anonymous in Durham. Anonymous says, I met a woman online, and she's coming to visit me soon. I haven't told her that I live with my mom and her three cats. She's excited about staying with me, but I can't afford a hotel room. How should I tell her about my, <laughs> about my living arrangement? <laughs> oh, this is not good. Oh, no. I can't. This is a Ooh. disaster. Ooh, and them cats, they give me the creeps, man. God, dog. Three. Okay. Three cats. Three cats. Yeah. Yeah. And you're inviting a woman over to, out of town over uh-huh. to this. And well, she going to stay there? A, he can't afford a hotel room. He can't afford this woman. Uh-uh. We don't need to be doing this. You, you, you go, you're going to have to front. You need to borrow somebody's house and stay somewhere else. But your mama yeah. and them cats, Borrow that's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> This I don't know what else to do, Carla. We got we cannot come up with Mama High with all these damn cats all up on top of the kitchen table and everything. We can't do that. <laughs> and invite this woman up in here. She ain't never seen this here before. We've been scared this woman half to death. <laughs> you think this woman gonna be wrapped up in a blanket on the couch, scared as hell. That's not that's not how you invite somebody out. You don't that's do that. No. That's not a good no. look. That's not a good Let's get your life together. Get, yeah. you, you don't need nobody right now. Get offline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stop catching All the way off. People. And don't nobody want you. I promise you. If you open up and tell everybody what you got. That you at your mama send some pictures to her at your mama house with them cats and stuff and ask her if she's still coming. <laughs> mm-hmm. What you got, Junior? 
Oh, uh, he said, how should I tell her about my liver break? Well, first of all, we got to do a little bit of lying. That's the first of all we got to do. First of all, uh, your mama live with you. That's the first lie you need to start with. You need to start with that one. So your mama it. lived. Okay. Now, Flip it. Huh? Flip it. Th- that's the first one. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. second one is, I rescue animals, and I just happen to fall in love with cats. That's when well, you a rescue <laughs> cat. That's what you do. You, that's why the like cats it. is in there. Because uh-huh. I rescue cats. I, I can't help pa- passing a, a stray cat. I have to pick it up and oh, bring it home. So I found a these nice three. person. Yeah. You have a good Yeah, heart. you have to do something. But uh-huh. don't tell her you can't afford no hotel. But your mama do live with you. That's what you need to tell her. Excuse uh-huh. me. Excuse uh-huh. me. Mm. He lives with his mom. Yeah, oh, but yeah. a lot is. He got to ask his mom if he can have company. <laughs> well, he going to have to do that before she get there. But when she get there, she live with him. That's what mm-hmm. he needs to understand. Okay. Oh. So, Jane, when she come in and see all these old people on the wall on these pictures. Yeah. All these yeah. old I have people. an affinity for old stuff. That's all you can tell. <laughs> yeah. I like old things. I don't you like the new life. You got all your lines together, Junior. You got wow. to do something. <laughs> when she see that big wooden spoon and fork on the wall, she's going to know. She's going to know something. All right, we're going to move on. Mm-hmm. Move on to Renee and Tempe. Renee writes, I had a first date with a man that's as fine as Rick Fox. Uh Uh-oh. I took my leftovers with me, and as he drove me home, something was funky. I thought it was my food, but I noticed his shoes were off. I declined a second date. Did I handle this correctly? (laughs) Girl, no. Ooh. But he he Rick Fox fine, though? He Rick Fox. You need to, come on now, you need to wash his feet. You need to. (laughs) Come on now, Jesus wash feet, y'all. Jesus yeah. wash feet. You can wash his feet. Yeah. You trying to throw away something good for a little, little, little small he little blemish. Wash his feet. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just saying. But all we gotta do is help the man out. Let's get his feet together. If that's the uh-huh. only blemish, let's work on getting the man feet together. You gonna yeah. have a have a nice little foot conversation with it, and let's get on. But, but get your tub and get down there and wash that man feet. Uh-uh. Wash his feet. <laughs> Like What's wrong, Jesus. Sherilyn? Call did, 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 did Jesus not wash feet? Did he, he not did. do that? He did. Yes, he did. He did. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Okay. Mm-hmm. So why this woman can't wash this man's nasty feet? Why uh-huh. can't she do that? Why can't he do it? They're his feet. I understand. He evidently uh-huh. there's something wrong. We got to fix that part. He look. Keep in mind, he Rick Fox up top. He Rick Fox up top. <laughs> Come on now. Rick Fox up top. <laughs> he Rick Fox up top. No, I feel like Rick Them ain't Rick's feet. Them ain't Rick's feet. We got to fix that part. That's all. He fix it. Some Destin it. Eggs. Junior. <laughs> Man, put all that in the bowl, Carla. Deaths and eggs. Fantastic. 409. Bleach. The bleach. Put all that yeah. In the- <laughs> Come on, Junior. <laughs> I just want to know. Um, I don't care if he look like Rick Fox or whoever, uh-huh. but. How strong is these feet? That's what I need to know. Because he in the driver's seat, and they up there on the brake and gas pedal. You in the passenger seat and say, I thought it was my food. But I looked down. Did I notice his shoes was off? Ugh. So these mean mm. these the, the folk in this car is very strong. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yeah. It had slid over to the passenger side. <laughs> Don't care nothing about washing feet. This ain't we this ain't not where we wash these feet. We gotta go by we gotta go by a car wash. Pressure wash these feet is what you need to do. <laughs> you need to upgrade. Your regular soap and water will get this. Cause it came to the other side. That's, they they strong. Mm. It's a different font. Yeah. This ain't we love phone. a good pressure washing. No, because you have to sniff your food and figure out this ain't my this ain't my steak. And the food just 30 minutes old. Ew. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. These yeah. feet strong. They are. What Morgan Freeman saying, Glory? Shoes, sir. Huh? I was <laughs> off trying to find some shoes. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Mm-mm. Rick Fox gonna... up top now. Uh-uh. Rick Fox uh-uh. up top. It would have to be Rick Fox. Okay. Let me tell you something. If that, was, if, yes. if that was Halle with some bad feet, let me tell you something. I'm going to get two huge garbage bags and wrap them feet up and bring my baby on the bed. I'm going to wrap them feet <laughs> up tight. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ask the Riddle and Junior for today. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Vice President Kamala Harris made a big entrance during her first official visit to her campaign headquarters on Monday evening, walking out to Beyonce's song, Freedom. The VP's team got approval from Beyonce's representatives to use the song throughout her presidential campaign. 
Beyonce, who is known for maintaining strict clearance guidelines around her music, gave a quick approval to the Harris campaign when they sought permission to use Freedom. Now, okay, here's a question for you guys. Nephew Junior Carla, if you guys were running for president, Mm -hmm. what song, Tommy, what song are you coming out on? Oh, oh, what is that? Uh, Jay-Z now. Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. <laughs> T.I. Yeah. T.I. Yeah, that, that right there. Jay-Z. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jay-Z uh-huh. and T.I. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. My mom used to sing that. What you coming out on, Carla? Oh, no. Because, see, it, it has to match what's going on, not really match me. Uh-huh. Because, okay. you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, what would it be? I don't know. Mm. Tyrone ain't gonna work. Call him. No. Get your <laughs> for Erica Badu. <laughs> Get yes. tired of you. I'm an artist. Just and play I'm that listening. part. <laughs> Junior, <laughs> what you what, coming out of? What song am I coming out to? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not coming out to a song. It's who I'm coming out with. Me and Jodeci walking out together doing Get On Up. That's what we doing. I'm <laughs> bringing Jodeci in out. person. We're not coming out to a song. You coming to a concert <laughs> when I'm president. Jodeci, you got to get on up. Everybody yeah. grab somebody. Turn the mother into yeah. a party. Yeah, I'll be just like that. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then when I finish, we're going to wob- wobble out. Oh. oh, now you can wobble out oh, now. You wobble out. <laughs> what you coming out on, Sherry? Yeah, uh, I think, I don't know. I was thinking of I'm coming out. Oh, Diana <laughs> Ross. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I was like just it. thinking about that on the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All, all the single ladies. <laughs> okay. Do oh, that too. Run the world, girls. Yes. You know, BB Harris got mm-hmm. some options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I like all that. right. Moving on to other entertainment news. Speaking of songs, Celine Dion, who's had some struggles of late um, with that stiff person disease that she had. I don't know if you guys Mm -hmm. saw her special, but it was very informative. And uh, Mm -hmm. it gave you a whole new perspective on how she's dealing with her illness and everything. But she said if she has to crawl back on that stage, she will perform again. Well, it looks like that day has come. Yeah because she's going to perform tomorrow, uh, Friday, at the opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Come on. Nice. Come yes, on, Selena. very nice. Selena. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and she supposedly uh, will be paid $2 million. She's just going to sing one song. For huh? what? One song. Yeah, what? $2 million for one song. Hell, I'd crawl call. out there, too. I don't, care how, stiff, I don't care how stiff I was. I'd be out there getting them notes up out of me. I Ooh, love I that. <laughs> I Two love million? that. Two million? Two million dollars for five for minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my work. God. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Go, it really, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More Olympic news. Snoop Dogg, I love this, will be the final Olympic torchbearer running through the streets of Paris before the opening ceremony uh, on Friday. I love that. Okay, so hold on. I hold love on. It. Let me say this right now. I hope he listens. Snoop, you bet not. You bet don't not. Don't you light dare. You light not. up uh-uh. with that torch in your hand. You hear me? Because I know that's a nice, nice little handful of fire you got there. Don't you yeah. dare. I don't think they can. Don't you dare hold that it. thing down and fire that thing up, huh? I don't think he could do it anyway legally. I don't. I don't think it's legal over there. Yeah. It was illegal over here no, for no, a while. No, when he was doing it, that's true. But it is now. <laughs> Man, I went to a I went to a Super Bowl party in Houston. Snoop was DJ, and the whole place was cloud. What are you talking about? Legal? <laughs> the L big fight. Remember when Steve did it in L.A. carried the torch? Remember he that? did. I remember. Yeah, that. he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. cool. I thought he was gonna drop it. He did good though. <laughs> he was nervous he too. Good. Remember I, that? He I was, was nervous, nervous yeah. watching him. I'm like, uh-huh. I'm this up. You know. You know, when he get on publicly, he'll mess something up. I said, well, he'll mess this up. (laughs) (laughs) But he did, and he carried it right on through. He did. Um, So, speaking of the Olympics, make sure you cheer on Team USA. All you have to do is listen to the free iHeartRadio app's audio coverage of the summer games. You can listen in your car, at work, at home, or anywhere your phone is, okay? Nice. We'll all be listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And and finally, as we switch gears... um, This is what's happening. This is what's trending. Uh, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle, she resigned after uh, the near assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump. 
it shook the confidence in her ability to lead the agency. All right. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to be the fall guy. And it was her in this in this instance. Uh, Trump was nicked in the ear after a shooter fired an AR style assault rifle. The shooter has climbed up and um, he climbed up on a, a nearby rooftop and mm -hmm. fired off as many as eight shots, eight shots, Jesus. killing Sadly, uh, a Pennsylvania firefighter and injuring two other men before being neutralized by a Secret Service counter uh, sniper. This is what Fre former President Trump this. said. Huh? I don't know how they didn't see this. I don't know how they didn't well, see this. Yeah, it, it was open. It was too open. Yeah. It was a failed mm -hmm. operation, and that's yeah. why she resigned, mm -hmm. you know, under her watch. Yeah. So they admit to the mistakes that were made. Yeah. Yeah. How come black folk get fired and white folk get to resign? I'm just asking. That's all. Just asking for a friend. That's all. I'm <laughs> for a friend. <laughs> well, this is what former President Trump said about it. He said that the Biden administration. The Biden-Harris administration failed to protect him, and he took a bullet for democracy. What? Oh, man. I'm so, uh, okay. What? He what? says really? anything. He says anything. <laughs> really? So okay. That's a stretch. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, President Biden addressed the nation last night. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. President Biden addressed the nation last night from the Oval Office. The president talked about what lies ahead and how it's time to pass the torch on now to a younger generation. And he will finish his term and job as president for the American people. The president talked about his accomplishments and he said that nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy, including personal ambition. President Biden went on to say that Vice President Harris is, quote, experienced, she's tough, she's capable, and he called her an incredible partner during their three and a half years together. At the end of his speech, the president expressed his heartfelt gratitude to be able to serve the nation and to ascend to the position he long sought. Take a listen. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, climb on Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office as President of the United States. But here I am. That's what's so special about America. We're a nation of promise and possibilities, of dreamers and doers, of ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things. I've given my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return with the love and support of the American people. I hope you have some idea how grateful I am to all of you. Wow. Wow. Very he nice. felt that. Oh. I yeah. really Very felt he classy. was sincere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to cry when he, yeah. the way oh, yeah, he spoke. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they, they showed on social media on the side his family sitting there. Yeah. And they said that the staff, people that work in the White House, they were all clapping. All you in know, the Rose Garden. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, very mm -hmm. emotional. Very mm -hmm. emotional speech. Again, like we said earlier, it takes a special yeah. man with a special character to do what he yeah. did. Like you said, Shirley, giving up, not giving up democracy for personal ambition. So he put yeah. the American people before his his job himself. Right. He said, "This yeah. is it's about the people. It's not about me. Yeah, I want this job. I want to continue, but the people have spoken." And it's time to hand it over, you know. And he he talked about how Kamala uh, Kamala was, you know, very capable and very tough, and she can do the job. Mm -hmm. That's a great endorsement, and I yep. think we know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I yeah. think we feel that too. <laughs> yeah. How you guys feel, <clears throat> Tommy Jr.? It's just interesting to look and see how night and day it is when you see see President Biden give his speech, and then you look at you turn the channel and you see Trump speaking, and it's just like. It's just evil. <laughs> it's just straight it's up evil. So yeah, much it's hate so, on Fox. It's so clear, yeah. though. It's hate. like so the president clear. said, no, I, choose yeah. love between love and hate. It's a choice. Yes. Yes. All I say is, I saw Joe Biden, and I looked at Joe Biden. I said, "I'm looking at him. I'm looking at a man. I'm just looking at a man. That's a grown man right there, mm -hmm. President a real Biden. man." No. All right, guys, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, say her name, Sonia Massey, a black woman in Illinois, called for help and was murdered by a white deputy police officer. We'll talk about that. Wow! Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we go again. 
Unbelievable. This is so, this is just a horrible, horrible story. I'm going to start with this. Say her name. Her name is Sonia Massey. Sonia Massey was a black woman. She was murdered by a white male deputy police officer on the 4th of July weekend. She called 911 for help. She lives in Springfield, Illinois. Sonia Massey called the police after she thought there was an intruder outside her house. Uh, the body cam video was released by Illinois State Police showing a sheriff's deputy shot Sonia Massey, Sonia Massey in the face. She was shot in the head, uh, in the face during a tense moment over a pot of boiling water in her home. That's what this was all about. In the video, Massey asked the deputy, where are you going? Away from your hot steaming water, the deputy responds. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, Massey says. Massey does not approach the deputies with the pot. She stays in her kitchen. The deputy, you better effing not. I swear to God, I'll effing shoot you in your effing face. This is what Deputy Grayson says before pulling out his gun. Okay, I'm sorry, Massey says as she ducks down. Later, Deputy Grayson can be heard on the camera saying... She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came at me with boiling water. Sonia's father, Mr. James Wilburn, spoke about the body cam footage on CBS this morning. Take a listen. So I think the, the cover-up started from just right after it happened. Thank God for the body camera footage. It's probably oh, yeah. the most horrible and heart-wrenching thing that we've ever seen in our lives. But if it were not for the body cam footage, we would not have known that this occurred. Mm, 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 mm. Um, this is so you know, sad. What do you say? Real sad, man. I don't. I don't. I. I. I mean, we 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 hear it every other month. It, here it goes again. Here it goes again. It never mm -hmm. stops. Um, then you start. Then here's the whole journey on what happens to this officer. What's going to take place with them next? But at the end of the day. It just it just seems to never stop, and it's always our people. It's always mm -hmm. us that's getting it. It's always us. You killed, this and I don't, and I don't over. wish it on, and I don't wish it on anybody. I'm no, just saying, no, it's not. Of always not. Not. no, of course not. Oh, of course not. But you killed this woman over a pot of water. That's she was unarmed. She, she didn't have a gun. Yes, she, yeah. right, right. She didn't throw the water at there, you. There's no threat. There's no and, threat. And, and didn't he tell her to take the pot of bo boiling yes. water off the stove? And that's yes, what she was did. doing. That's exactly she got right. She shot in the head. Yes. And her father, uh, the family has said that she did have some mental health mental. issues, but she did seek out treatment and she had treatment for that. At the end of the day, you killed this woman over a pot of water. Mm -hmm. That's her what house. you did mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. her home. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is horrific. Yeah. Horrible. Well, tell me again, what was the purpose of the call? She thought she, there was an intruder, there was an intruder outside. outside, of, outside she outside called the police. Home. Yes, she did. Yeah, she called yes, she them. Yes, well, yes. If you thought an intruder was outside, that's what you would normally that's do. That's what you do. Call the police. Yeah. Yeah. Really, <sighs> really, yeah. really sad. This is really, yeah. Her um, civil rights were violated. <sighs> Oh yep. And speaking of civil rights, civil rights attorney Ben Crump is uh, representing the family. Thank God. Uh, Deputy Grayson, meanwhile, has pleaded not guilty to charges of first degree murder, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. He is being held in the county jail where he lives, where he awaits trial. So there you go. Saying yeah. county it's, jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was a mother of two, by the way. Yeah. She was a mother of two. This is also something that I read that uh, one of the family member, one of the friends said at first, the police didn't even tell them that they were the cause of her death. Mm. So the, so now you mm. want to know, is there a cover up? Yeah. What what yeah. is going on? What happened that night? And thank God for this body cam footage from right. the other officer, right. from the other officer that yeah. was on site. They didn't even want to help her, give her medical aid, no. any of these things. So all this is yeah. coming out now. So thank God the family yeah. has attorney Benjamin Crump on right. the case. Right. Champion I heard of justice. Said, mm -hmm. yeah. I heard he said that she came at him with the pot of boiling water. That is not true. That You no. don't see that. The video shows that. that, right? The video right, shows that, right? That she didn't do that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All right. Thanks, guys. Coming up next, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it is my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is... We're not going to make it till November. <laughs>
<laughs> we are not. <laughs> the election. I, I've actually heard that before, though. I don't, I've been told every. I've, I've been told. I've been told every month. We ain't gonna make it December. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> We'll find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. <laughs> what, nephew? Uh, what? Y'all y'all ready? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, this is uh, garnish your wages. Garnish mm-hmm. your wages. Mm-hmm. I used to think garnish was food that you put on. Never mind. But garnish... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if they so were putting it on it. money when they say garnish yeah, you your wages. I don't know. Top of your money, so it's just yeah, I didn't know how they were doing that. Jenny, <laughs> they say With garnish your wages. Top of your money. You're not playing. What? No, you really stupid. You're not playing. You really stupid. Junior, Junior, but I, but I ask reasonable questions, Junior. I mean, they say garnish, uh-huh. and it's your way. Okay, Junior, let me ask you this here, Popeye. Okay, now Popeye used to date who? Olive oil. Now, why why won't they cook that chicken in olive oil? You see, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know I don't understand that. I don't understand that, Junior. I just don't get it. <laughs> Try to make it healthy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might well go and go with his girl. You feel me? You go and go with his girl. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> you are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is gone at your wages. Here we go. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, please. Mess who's calling? My name is uh, from the district attorney's office. Yes. Uh, hi, how are you? Uh, giving you a call today, ma'am, trying to get some updates from you. Your husband, Mr. Cullen, is he uh, still not working at this point? No, sir. Okay. Uh, how long has he been out of work so far, ma'am? Could you could you give me an update on this? First of the year, January. Okay. All right. Here's what we're having, the problems that we're having. You have a son. Um, I think it's uh, his name is as well, 14 years old. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Okay, the child support is not being paid from uh, Mr. for the uh, for Mr. Young, and then we're trying to get this thing rectified. Now, the problem that we're going to have, and the reason why we're giving you a call, is considering that your your husband hasn't worked since the first of the year, and I haven't done the research yet. I'm just mm-hmm. not, I'm just not pulling up your file. I haven't done the research to see how many months in the rears he is on child support. But it, it just started once um, he lost his job. Okay. Well, the problem that we're, we're going to have is they're going to start taking uh, child support, actually, and, and I hate to give you this news, out of your check until... I don't, I don't understand how that's so, because I have my own kids. So I, I don't understand that. I understand, but they're going to be garnishing your check, ma'am, uh, until this until your husband can get this thing back on his feet and get it rectified and get him uh, up to par as far as all the payments that are, that are not... And there. when will this be taking place? Because if that's the case, I'm not going to be working. <laughs> Cause that's not going to happen. I have my own children, so I don't understand how is that for so. I don't, I don't have anything to do with child support or anything like that. And if that's the case, I'm not going to be working as of right now. The garnishing of the check is going to come from you, and you are at the hospital, correct? No. That's not. It's not where you work. I don't. I'm not going to be working as of right now. <laughs> that's what I just told you. So y'all do whatever you got to do, and I will do whatever I have to do on my end. Okay. Well, well, hold on a minute. You're willing to quit your job? I'm not understanding this. This. You're sure why? Because I. I'm not going to be taking care of someone else's kids and I have my own. So how? That's right. So somebody else can take care of my eyes then because I'm not going to be doing it. You're so right. All right. Well, I mean, I'm just, you know, don't, I don't want you to be who, upset. Who with, are you? I, I mean, don't want you to be I upset with me. I can be able to contact you. Okay. You, you now, I'm going to let, I'm going to let you know this. this is a bit of information. You're mm-hmm. still going to, if, if you're quitting your job, ma'am, you guys are still going to be liable for the child support. Okay, well, that's fine. Not you guys, because it's not my children, sir. Okay? It's not you guys. It's he will be liable. Okay? Because, okay? Gonna... I don't, I mean, can I step, can you hold one moment? Because I need to step outside, if that's okay. Or if there's a number, I can contact you back. Okay. Are you able to step outside right now? Um, Yes, but I'm going to get on the elevator, and it's going to kind of throw the call off. Okay, let's do this. Why don't you step outside? And, and I'll wait for you to call. Give me about 45 seconds, but I'm going to give a call to my manager on this situation, okay? Please do, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you. you. Uh-huh. Hello. Okay, Miss. Yes, sir. Hi, again from the district okay. attorney's office. Okay, you can hear me now. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I sure can. Now, let's get to the bottom of everything. I couldn't get my manager on the phone, but uh-huh. um, I'll keep trying. I just want to know. Um, I mean, that, that's, I'm just a mess- messenger mean, letting you know. You know. I, hate, I know you are, and I hate to be so short with you, 
But I don't understand because we're not even getting enough income coming in as of right now. And you're speaking of, I have three children that I'm struggling to take care of on my own. And plus somebody from the district or something. But, um, and you're speaking of that you're going to be deducting money from Gunnar Shin, my check for his child support. What's your sir? Something. What's your name? Man, who's. Is, is there someone else I need to speak with? No, we're on the phone. I, I that's my sister what taking care of some What part of district yeah. attorney? County, ma'am. Yeah. She is on the line from the Office of Child Support Service. She works with the Office of Child Support Service. Okay, okay. may I speak with your sister? Let, si let, let me speak with your help. sister, okay. ma'am. So what do you, I mean, how is this going to be done? Because that's not going to leave me to cash to be able to support my own kids. Well, you know, I mean, in my own home. I, I understand that. You know, maybe this is a problem with having a person hanging around. It's you not know. a person because has raised his feet about his kids all their life. This is a jealous mother that decided after 18 years that she wanted to. Uh, oh, what, in the, what in the hell is going on with those people in the background? Hello? Look, this nephew Tommy, it didn't hit the fan. She went off. No, nah, I couldn't get her to go out, but her sister was there. Don't say nothing to tell him, made her get off the phone. So I need you to call on three ways. They was calling somebody. They probably was calling downtown, going to get themselves in mo trouble. Okay, hold on a minute. I'll call you back, honey. What's wrong? I'll call you back, honey. I'll tell you about it. No, you won't. You're going to talk to her right now. Who the f Who is this? I told you you're going to pay this child support, not me. Get your heart. Get the best way you can. He's talking to me. Call me. I'm going to pay this child support. you pay it. You're going to make me. You're going to make me whip your behind this money. Tell him you will find out who he is. You want to you wanna talk to my lawyer, sir? Yeah, I want to. Where is your. You don't have a lawyer. You know. No, well, you don't have one. Why don't y'all, whoever, how do you got my number, behind? This is some process they have to go through for your job. We have to go to court first. Who is this? This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Yo, just got pranked by my baby. I'm going to cut y'all. I'm going to come on the radio because I know y'all going to pay for this. <laughs> I gotta ask, I gotta ask all y'all something. What is the baddest radio show in the land? See? <laughs> Garnish them wages, huh? Huh? All I'm right. on here. Taking the money. You play too much. Oh, mm -mm. Get the prank of some. Get the prank of some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what did I tell y'all about Philadelphia? Didn't I tell y'all we had two Friday, two Saturday, one on Sunday? Yeah, I tell y'all I had five shows. Didn't I tell y'all I had five shows? Didn't Comedy I tell y'all shows. Yeah, yes. you did. I did. Yes. I tell y'all I got uh -huh. five shows. But they gone. Uh -huh. They gone. They gone. What? They gone. They what? sold out. <laughs> so Sunday, I have added a 7 o'clock show. I have added a 7 o'clock show. This is the Helium Comedy Club, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Helium, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right, that is 7 o'clock this Sunday. I have added a show. So come on out now. You know, radio family, I know we're supposed to be here Monday morning. I know. Well, let, well, let me think about it, though. You ain't thinking about nothing. You're going to carry your behind it. down to WDAS. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and keep right. some work. <laughs> Congratulations. Sound on like Philly to me. <laughs> Coming up next, Strawberry Letter for today. The subject, we're not going to make it till November. <laughs> we'll get into that right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, uh, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. <laughs> and you never know, it could be your <laughs> nephew. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. You ready? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm happy. Let's go. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. All right. Thank you, Neff. Subject, uh, we're not going to make it till November. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 47-year-old married man. Married man. My wife's 29 year old niece got divorced recently and moved back to town. Her daughter is in a really good preschool that happens to be by our house. So my wife asked if she and her daughter can stay at our house until November when her alimony payments start and she could move into her own house. She works part time for now and I work second shift. So I don't head out to work until 2 p.m. daily. My wife goes to work around 7 a.m. and she drops the kid off at school. The niece cooks me breakfast every morning. She told me it's the least she can do for staying with us for free. She can really she can really cook, too. I never had homemade French toast or an egg white omelet. Uh, She cooks in her pajamas, and I'm very comfortable with it, but I wonder if she would put on a robe if my wife was home. I get a lot of mixed signals from this woman. She opened up about why her marriage didn't work, and she looks sad a lot. I want to reach out and hug her, but I can't get close to her without being nervous. I'm not that strong. I feel like she's flirting with me in a way. The other day, she had a job interview, and she looks so good after she got dressed she asked me to zip up her dress and my hands were shaking I could feel her heart racing too uh, I, I don't think we're going to make it until November she has not told my wife that she has been cooking for me or that she confides in me she asked me to keep that between us what's up with this woman is she waiting for me to make a move or am I dreaming what should I do Well, one thing is true for sure. If you guys keep this up, you will not make it until the weekend. Forget November. You won't make it till the weekend. There's there's way too much sexual tension going on in this house. Yes, I think she's flirting and, and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, yeah, I think she's flirting with you. And and as nice as your wife has been to her, uh, she. I don't think that she should turn around and do her sister like that. Your wife has opened up her home, not her husband, okay? The husband is off limits. You should be nervous because your wife's sister will have you caught up. She'll have you divorced if you decide to take her on. Uh, You haven't thought this through. I know you're a man. you got to use your brain, not your body parts in this situation. And you know what I mean. Do not gamble with her sister. Don't do this. It's not worth it. You've got too much to lose. Don't be stupid, okay? Do not... Don't be stupid and lose everything. I know it's hard to say no, you know, with her walking around in her PJs and asking you to zip her dress up and all that and confiding in you. And look, I know that she's cooking for you. You said she can really, really cook. You got to stop all this. Stop being around her. Stop eating her meals. Stop zipping up her dresses. You can't do that. You're a grown man. You do have self-control. You can say no if it goes any further. But if you have to, just leave the house because you definitely aren't going to make it until November. Like I said, you won't make it till the weekend. Tommy? Oh, man. I feel so sorry for this brother. I I have sympathy for him. I do. Because this right here is a prime example Mm -hmm. of ass and eggs. That's what this is. This is all about ass and eggs. That's what this is. You understand? That's what this is. What? You know, this is ass and eggs. That's what it is. I know y'all might not be with me on it, but I'm hey. Mixed signals. Mm-hmm. What is that? Ass and eggs. That's what they mean. <laughs> that's no robe on. No robe. What, 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 what is that? You already know what that is. That's ass and eggs. That's what this is. Come on. But, but, but every man needs that to start his day. You understand what I'm saying? That's how men love to start their day. Before I get on the radio, that's the first thing I'm asking for. Okay. All right. Ass and eggs. What? Okay. Move what? on. I'm sorry. Carla, if I go to the doctor's office, I don't want to go to a doctor that is stressed. I want to go to a doctor who has had what? Ass and eggs okay. this morning. Uh, He's right. doing that just fine. Go together. He doesn't. What? Surely. What? It's too much. What? It's too much. What? 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 Yes. I, when I go to the nail shop, I want my nail tech to have ass and eggs. Stop saying you, you're that. You're not going to have my hands and feet in your hand, and you don't feel relaxed. And you're stressed. When I, when I get to church on Sunday, I want uh-uh. me to relax. Uh-uh. 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 Don't, say, don't say eat. Don't say nothing. Move on. Okay. But y'all, y'all don't think, Pastor, 
Like we get have. it. We get what you're uh, saying. Okay, we're going to say A&E. Not the network, but A&E. Okay. <laughs> A&E. A&E. No, A&E. How about that? A&E. Yeah. All right? So That's let me better. go ahead and tell you. There's no way. There ain't no way November happening. This is to happen, I promise you, this week this is going weekend, down. Because yeah. every time I have helped, every time I have zipped somebody up, I have zipped them, I have zipped them right back down. I'm just trying to tell you. I have done. One more time, one that more time. Every time I have zipped someone up, I have zipped them right back down. Right back down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't zip you up and not zip you down at the same time. I'm sorry. This is just A and E at its best. Every man driving right now, the the the, the, the truck drivers, uh, the, all of them mm-hmm. love a little A and E in the morning before going to work. A and E, it just helps us get through our day. Am I right, men? All right. All you men uh, out there, blow your horns if A and E is what you're really talking about. A and E, come on, blow right, your we'll, horn for some A and E. We'll have part two of the strawberry, strawberry letter response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject is we're not going to make it till November. We'll get back into it right after this. Everything I've zipped up, <laughs> I've zipped right back down. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time now to recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is we're not going to make it till November. <laughs> not what you thought at first, huh? Uh, no. This was this was written uh, by a man, a 47-year-old married man who says um, that his wife's 29-year-old niece got divorced recently, so she moved back to town. His wife asked the niece to move in with them until um, she gets her alimony. Uh, in November. So the niece moved in. She has a little girl. They, uh, the little girl goes to school near them. So the wife gets up and leaves early in the morning, takes the, takes the baby to school and all of that to preschool. Meanwhile, the husband works a second shift. So he's at home. Uh, the niece, a 29 year old niece has a a part-time job. So she's at home. So what's going on at home while the wife is at work? Well, the husband gets breakfast every morning from the 29-year-old niece, niece, and he says she can really cook. She makes him A&E. French toast, A- A- egg white omelets, <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> and all of that. She cooks in her PJs. She doesn't have Woo. a robe on. Yeah, so, yeah. And he thinks that she's giving him mixed signals, the niece, because um, he thinks she's flirting with him in a way. Uh, She asked him to unzip her dress. I mean, to zip her dress back up because she had a job interview. He said she was looking so good that day. He could barely zip it up because his hands were shaking so much because it's a lot of sexual tension going on in this house. Uh, she, She confides in the husband, but she has told him not to tell the wife what she and the husband talk about, all right, Um, to keep that between them. So he wants to know what is up with this woman? Is she waiting for him to make the first move or is he dreaming and what should he do? All right, I said do not get involved with this young woman at all. He could, don't gamble with her. He could lose everything. (laughs) Tommy said A and E. (laughs) Yeah, that's ass and eggs. Stop ass saying that. Eggs. Shannon, everybody... why'd you bring it up? <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick preview. All right. And Junior, now it's on you. Uh, we're not going to make it till November. Listen, um, <laughs> all I know is mm-hmm. you're going to have to stop eating breakfast in the morning. You're going to uh-huh. have to stop uh-huh. eating this breakfast in the morning. you 47. Mm-hmm. She 29. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no business in there. You know, Judge Lynn Toller has a show called Divorce Court. I don't know if y'all seen it. Yeah. I've seen uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I watch it a lot. And uh, you finna be on it behind some <laughs> French toast and some omelets. <laughs> Go in there and tell Judge Toller on Divorce Just tell her how good them French toast eggs was and them French toast and them egg white omelets that your grown ass say you ain't never had. Who the hell ain't never had French toast and an egg white omelet? You 47. Where have you been? They been making French toast from scratch. How you think you get the French toast? <laughs> you, you, they make pancakes at home from scratch. You gotta have batter mix. It's just batter. It's the same thing. Not it's like the you. same exact thing. But you know, but here's some things you finna lose like your house you got to tell yeah. Judge Lynn Toll about your house because you finna lose that. 
Uh-huh. Uh, your car, you finna lose that too. Uh, uh-huh. The alimony that she waiting to get, you finna start paying. Because you're going to have to pay that as well. Uh, your kids every other weekend. Start thinking about that. Okay. Start thinking about that. Uh, mm-hmm. The pajamas you was looking at, that's going to cost you everything. Don't even worry about zipping her dress up. Tell her to go in that closet, get a wire hanger, undo it, and try to break in your car like you did breaking your car with a wire hanger. Oh, try yeah. to zip it up over your back like that. Uh-huh. That's how you zip your dress up. Don't put your hands on this. Jenny, how did you know that? Wow. Because I seen Quisha do it. That's how I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. That's how I know. That's how you zip your dress up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Undo mm-hmm. a hanger. Look in the uh-huh. mirror and put that like you just like we try to break in our car. We put that hanger, try to unlock that lock. Do the same thing with excuse your zip me, on your dress. Me. You said it's just like that? Just like just it's, like it's breaking just, you gotta in bend a car? the hanger the same way. It's the same angle. We've all <laughs> broken a car, Carla. We've yeah, all no, done. we haven't. No. Yes, we have. No. Oh, Carl, you never <laughs> locked your keys in the car? And and yes, Who are I'm you done. guys? Oh, We've yeah. broken into oh, our own car. Come on, yeah, now. it's ours. Now I know some people <laughs> who have done that to get in somebody else's car, but I'm not them people. I'm not yeah, even that's Uncle Steve that. and broke into people's stuff. That's Uncle Steve. What's <laughs> he doing? That's for another that's day. All. Okay, okay, I know. Right. That's go all ahead, it is. Okay, because so, you know, and if, what you need to do is get off this second shift and get on first shift. That's yes. what you need to do. <laughs> and another thing you need to do is get take the baby house. to school your damn self because you're gonna lose yes. everything. I'll take the baby. Take the baby to school and then you <laughs> go to work. You everybody leave the house at seven is what I'm saying. Yes. Everybody. You don't need she needs to be in there by herself. Cause you keep getting up she every does. morning. Keep, is she flirting with you? I don't know if she flirt. I don't know what she's she doing. But you need to be on first shift. You need to go on and change. Put your request mm-hmm. in. That's what you need yeah. to do. Junior, you take the baby. I I'll zip her up though. You you, you go okay. ahead and take the baby. I, <laughs> I, I got the well, I got the zip zipper. I got the You gonna zip up. I like the Why house you? I live in. I don't wanna Why lose it. Yeah, I'm like, right. man, we're not leaving a perfect good zipper unzipped. Or up, up, uh, zipped up or you zipped better get down. that hanger, like Junior said. <laughs> you better get a hanger. Why tell she her, can't move tell her to, Hey, go in that mirror, look over around your back, look over your shoulder, and catch mm-hmm. that hanger and zip it up, pull it. You good? So, what would you guys you, do in that situation? I mean, this is a, you sure? Mm-hmm. Oh, at my house? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah, not, I'm not you're no not. You're not going to be around this. I'm not going to be nowhere near this little girl at all. Okay, it's too tempting. I'm going to cut the gas off in the house. We're not making breakfast. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> this stove would not be hot by the time she get ready to make breakfast. We ain't got no gas in here. <laughs> you going to have to move. We Chick-fil-A I'm going to day. somebody's restaurant and eat breakfast. I'm not yeah, doing this, Yeah, it's too though. much. Right. Uh-uh. He can That's lose everything. It. It's not That's right. It. Uh-huh. All right. Thanks, guys. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram yeah. and Facebook and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. You can download it today. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what's oh, up? Yeah. Um, have y'all seen this man? Terrell Davis. Did y'all see what happened to Terrell Davis, the, uh, the, the Denver Bronco Hall of Famer running back? Yep. This United don't Airlines. make no sense. United yes, United this States. don't make no sense. What this happened? man was kicked off a flight, handcuffed off a flight, actually. Mm-hmm. But during the flight, he asked for some ice from a flight attendant, tapped him on the shoulder. The, the flight attendant swings around and says, get your hands off me and don't hit me. And then the other person said, hey, he didn't hit you. Mm-hmm. Another, another, another person said, yeah, he didn't hit you. All he did was ask for ice. When the plane landed in Orange County, he was handcuffed by the FBI and escorted off the plane in what? front of his wife Bad. Yeah. and his three children. And his children, his boys. Yes. His two boys and a little girl, I believe. Yeah, yeah and this what? don't make no sense because how in the world we cannot even ask flight attendants for ice now on planes? It wasn't that. He touched her. That's I, okay. She was upset. Him. You can't touch him. Yeah. You can't touch him. Period. Uh, okay. You can't, right. you can't touch him. So that's she. Now, did the flight attendant overreact? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Right. I'm trying to understand how is he, he is he getting escorted off in handcuffs? Yeah, that's terrible. For that. Now he yeah. wasn't ticketed or cited for the incident, but he okay. is going to sue United Airlines. He's, he's suing as them. he should today. As he should. Yeah. yeah. Today. I know they apologize. That's not good enough you. for me. That's yeah. not you good know, enough. Because Aww. what about the embarrassment of getting arrested in front of your wife and yes. children? Handcuffed in front of your wife and your children, though. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that make you feel? Mm-hmm. Much as I fly. Yeah. There's some attitudes on them planes, man. There's some Flight attitudes. Flight attendants put up with a lot <laughs> oh, yeah. I get that. on those of flights. Of course they do. Yes. But I don't think in this situation, I don't right. think 
I don't think this one was right. I don't think what happened to Terrell was right. I mean, he was yeah, just trying to get no. somebody. It was just I, overreacting. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, when would you not t- tap someone on the shoulder for just their attention? Just tapping somebody. I mean, you know the difference between someone tapping you and a hit? Yeah. If the Terrell first, hit you, you'd have been knocked out. You would out. know it. You would <laughs> know it. You would know it. Yeah, you would know if he hit you. can't touch him. That's for sure. But is that what it is, Carla? You cannot touch flight attendants at all under no circumstances. You shouldn't be touching them. You should not. Okay. Oh, okay. You have to so, get their attention, but you shouldn't be tapping on them. And I guess we, we're to this point because of all the crazies that yeah. have been on the and plane acting crazy. So yeah. I get them being mm-hmm. on edge and all that. But in this particular instance, you know, even the airline apologized. They recognized that the flight attendant overreacted. And it was he, he was now, humiliating in front of his family and embarrassed. You're absolutely right. And I think a good ten million dollars would make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would straight it out That's for what me I too. Thank you. Get over it. A cool ten million. million. We're gonna work this out. Now, We're gonna the flight work attendant this has been placed million. on leave at this point from United yeah. Airlines. That flight attendant yeah. is on leave. So yeah, I just thought it was just crazy. Just, this would be why crazy. they on leave? Why we ain't on? Why we ain't on left? Why we ain't on gone? Why? Why is that? <laughs> okay. I'm Coming up at the top leave. of the hour, a man on social media needs some advice. He uh, about talking to his wife about his past. Okay, we'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is from B on Steve Harvey FM. B says, my wife's friend visited us over the 4th, and one night when my wife was asleep, her friend and I talked into the night about my wife before I met her. I was kind of shocked at her friend's description of my wife in her 20s, and on some level, I wish she would act more like that now. For one, her friend told me that my wife was very sexually adventurous back then. I'd like to discuss this with my wife, but I don't want to cause a rift between her and her friend, since her friend may have been talking about stuff my wife wouldn't have wanted her to. So how can I bring this subject up to my wife without damaging her relationship with her friend? You can't bring this up. Uh-uh. As what? far as I'm concerned, this conversation never happened. Never happened. You can't bring this up, partner. All right? And you found out some information about your baby. Cool. That's good. It was good information. You learned that she was very uh, uh, sexual and you like that part. Good. Now, you got to figure out your own way of pulling that out. But you can't You can't not have this conversation and talk about you had a conversation with her girlfriend. No. Some right. friend. No. <laughs> Spilling the tea just yeah. running your mouth. Ooh, she was yeah. ooh, she was out there. She was real ooh, back in the day. Yeah. Oh. No. no. <laughs> that goes so to you the say, grave. So, right. so you say Jackie was twerking on the rooftop, huh? Yeah. <laughs> really? That's not your really? friend. Right. <laughs> One time we were in Vegas. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What? What? No, no, that's not a good thing at all. Don't do that, brother. You found out some information that wasn't bad, and not, not like a another man or something like that. So you cool. Just, 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 just ride it. It is what it is. Some men just don't know when to stop. Just hey, yeah, you found out something is pretty good information. You can use it later, but you never talk about that you had this conversation with this woman. Stop. Yeah. And I'm sure y'all was out there on that patio drinking, and you got all that information from her. What? That's what happened. She uh-huh. had that liquid She's courage. Oh, don't don't be mad at her. She was drinking. Oh no, I'm mad at her. her. Running her mouth. Don't be mad husband. at her. Yeah. What? <laughs> Telling where the bodies are buried and yeah, revealing yeah. all that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. To the grave. Well, you we shouldn't go. have left. You shouldn't have left them out. There. Get your butt about that bed and come on out there and see what they talking about. I thought they were asleep. <laughs> what happens in our 20s stays in our 20s. Oh, 30s, 30s too. 30s right. too. Early yeah. 30s. <laughs> yeah. Mess around and wake up. Mess around and wake up and what's going to be happening? Why? Ass and eggs. Oh. Ass and eggs. <laughs> Junior, what you got on this? No, I was say, I mean, no. You, man, you can't bring it up to your wife and you need to stop talking to a friend. But on top of that, Ain't nobody who they was in their twenties. No, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not. Mm-hmm. My wife ain't the same person she was in her twenties. I mean, she, she probably was sexually adventurous and all that type of stuff in her twenties or whatever. You know, with me and everything. But it ain't happening now, cause now you know we got grandbabies, so it's kind of hard to be sexual. We watching Frozen all the time. I can't. <laughs> you can't have nothing happen in Frozen at all. <laughs> can't touch her shoulder and the grandbaby right there. I can't do nothing now. <laughs> You ain't finna get that woman no more. That woman gone. That's not the one you finna get. Let it go. Let it go. That's what I'm taking now. Let it go. Don't, don't nobody yeah. look like they looked in no, the winter. No, can't. <laughs> ain't working. 
baby yeah. shark. Do, 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 do. Yeah, all of that. That's what I'm doing. That's what I got to try to work with. <laughs> all right. We have time for another one from Daryl. Daryl on Steve Harvey FM says, after two decades of marriage, I'm back into the dating scene and I'm legitimately terrified. Things have changed so much and I feel like one wrong move can ruin everything. One of my big things is wondering about how to pay for the first date. I just assume that if I'm the one that asked her out, then I'm the one that's paying. However, I also understand that times and attitudes have changed. How do I address this without making it a thing, you know? I like him. Uh, you just gotta step out there and try it. I don't know how this 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 dating game is different. It's really really different. So you gotta just step out there and give it a shot, and don't don't do no texting because old people we don't know how to text right. So don't do that. You are gonna mess something up. <laughs> communi- our communication skills is shot. Whatever. It ain't changed that much. Pay the bill, sir. But yeah. I like Man. everybody so they say. But I like. I text no somebody how you took the first check. I mean, I, I ain't seen that. What that do that at? On the, the first, first date, um, the second check. No, <laughs> yeah, pay the check. Yeah, every date, every date. Hey. Something, all, everything hasn't changed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when was you dating? Just pay the check. <laughs> We're the we are all right. Yeah. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at twenty minutes after the hour. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> This is kind of crazy. Guess who donated to the uh, Kamala Harris's uh, attorney general campaign? This was back in 2011 and 2014. Just take a wild guess. Donated to her campaign. Trump. Former President Trump. Donald Trump. Trump. Got it. Trump? <laughs> Oh, you we got, got receipts? Yes. He, done, he donated not once, but twice to reelect Kamala Harris as the Attorney General of California. The state records show that Trump contributed $5,000 in September of 2011 toward Harris's 2014 reelection campaign and then followed that up with another $1,000 in February of 2013. His daughter, Ivanka, also do- donated to the campaign, contributing 2000 in uh, 2014. However, Kamala Harris did not keep the $6,000 from Trump. A spokesperson told the Sacramento Bee in 2020 that she donated the money to a nonprofit that advocates for civil and human rights for Central Americans in 2015. So there you go. See, mm-hmm. even he knew uh-huh. back in the day. Uh-huh. <laughs> the woman for the Man, job. This should just come up in the debate. You should bring this yes. up. Uh-huh. Thank you, by the way, for that donation yeah. you gave me. Uh, receipts. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. We got yeah. receipts. We uh-huh. got receipts. For sure. We got checks, though. Uh-huh. That's what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> You've been backing me. Yes. yes. <laughs> like and now it. they're I asking, like what has she done? Come on. Uh, coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, guys, we'll play another round of Would You Rather right after this. Can we expect your vote, too? Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather, guys, be unable to use Google again, or would you rather be unable to use social media? Kind of the same, but not. Kind of the same, but mm. not. No, it ain't. No. I need that Google, y'all. Yeah, I, I need information. Yeah. yeah, I need that Google. I gotta yeah. be. Yeah, you gotta find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah I need it. But a lot of people use social media to do the same thing. <laughs> no, they don't that fact Google. check. That's scary. But I be looking up yes. stuff you ain't never heard of. Right, <laughs> right. J- Jamaican fish fry. Let me find out where they got that. I'm at. guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. Use this, and you look like this <laughs> all right would you rather only eat pizza for the rest of your life or would you only rather eat barbecue for the rest of your life so pizza or barbecue which one either way we locked up god <laughs> who we but locked pizza, up pizza though <laughs> uh, that barbecue gonna get old mm. Ooh. is it mm. every day <laughs> is it, it yeah Ribs, chicken, brisket? Is it? Mm. Come on, Shirley Caesar. Real, real, real. Uh, <laughs> You name it. <laughs> I'm going with the piece. Yeah. That's too much bread, though. That's too much oh, gluten. It's okay. It's right. Gluten free okay. pizza. It's okay. I'm back at the barbecue. Come on. I'm back at the barbecue. See? Junior, I never left barbecue. That wasn't even a question for me. I never left. I knew where I was going. I was waiting on time. I said, hey, this ain't even hard for me. I grew up. I started my life at a, with a rib at two. Why would I give that up now? Been on it all my life. 
Lifetime commitment. Why stop now? You know, coming out of South Park, we didn't know what pizza was. <laughs> Come on, South Park. <laughs> All right, would you rather have a rock in your shoe or only wear wet socks? A rock in your shoes or only wear wet socks? Ooh, oh, that rock, man. that rock gonna slow you down. Mm-hmm. It's gonna irritate Oof. you, right? Man. Give me that, give me that wet sock. Yeah, the wet give socks. Wet sock. Yeah. yeah, we can't. Yeah. They're going to dry right. eventually. They're going to eventually dry. <laughs> Your feet going to stink and itch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mildewy. But that blanket right. I'm going to have, though, that's going to be the, the, just, uh-uh. <laughs> God. Ooh, that's going to cut. Would you rather your skin change colors based on your mood, like a mood ring, or would you rather your... Tat- or would you rather tattoos pop up on your body based on what you did yesterday? Oh no, my skin, my skin. I would avatar y'all ass out of here. I'd be blue. I ain't lying. I swear I'd be blue, yellow, y'all. I'd just be changing on you. No, no, I'd rather be my skin just change colors. I would. Just then love tattoos it. pop up on you based on what you did uh, yesterday. Uh, that could be very no, telling. That's, that's 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 telling what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. No, you're mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Junior, yeah, Jack, yeah, where, yeah. Jack, where y'all went last yeah, night? Skin, skin. Nah, I got to put color. my whole body up and cover it up because these tattoos finna <laughs> pop out. And Put show your body the club up. I was at. <laughs> <laughs> Junior. Yeah, I'm going. I'm changing colors. I'm not. Okay. I'm not finna, No. All right, guys. Thank you. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up at 49 minutes after, <laughs> it's our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are. It is the last break of the day. It's the last break of the day. Love it, and I know you want to leave us with some closing remarks, Steve. You know, um, last night when I finished up Family Feud, I was talking to the audience. And um, we were talking about... um, hanging in there and uh, one of the audience members was saying that they feel underqualified because they work around and live around a lot of people with education and education is important to a lot of people and in a lot of fields and uh, please know education is really really great to have I'm not knocking it in any shape form or fashion so please don't misunderstand me but I was asking this person were they good at school? And they said, no, never have been. And they asked them to do this, what they want to be in life. And do you have to go to school? They said, not really. And so that kind of troubled me a little bit because I was ended up talking to a person who was trying to shape who they really wanted to be and who they saw themselves becoming, but were trying to shape it in the image of other external people on the outside and around him. And I I began to talk to this guy, and I I tried to um, enlighten him to some things. You know, education is important, and you should get as much as you can. But you can become successful without an education. Now, understand something. If you want to be a doctor, dentist, lawyer, you know, you want to work in certain branches and fields, of course, you, have, you can't be a teacher without an education. You can't be a professor without one. Can't be a lawyer, doctor, dentist, scientist. You, there are things that require an education. But if your imagination has you somewhere else, stop letting other people try to put you in the box that they came out of. There are some people that no matter how you talk to them, if you don't do it they way, then you ain't doing it the right way. I cannot even begin to tell you how many people have tried to talk me off of the path I was on when clearly God had put me on another path. I tried to go to college. I did. I've never been a great student. Once again, understand me now, I'm not knocking education because I tell people all the time, I admire people who climb the corporate ladder through education, who climb the educational field. That is like amazing to me because that's not a skill set I have. But I can't tell you how many people have tried to talk me off my path. Do you know one time a lady once told me at a major institution, that if you want to rep this institution, you're going to have to go back to college. And I said, go back to college for what? And they said, because it would make a better statement 
if you were a college graduate yourself. And I wasn't being arrogant or anything, but I was looking at this lady trying to figure out what better statement could I make than crawling out of homelessness, putting my faith and trust in God, and asking God to rescue me from all the mistakes I've made. Watch him do it. Climb as well. Now, I may not be up there where you think I ought to be, and I may not talk the way you think I ought to talk, but the God I serve delivered me from so many mistakes I had made, college being one of them. What better testament, what better story can I tell? Don't let people put you in the box just because that's the box that they jumped out of. That ain't your box. That ain't your route. That ain't your journey. That ain't your ticket. You have got to put your faith in God and understand that all of us are on a different journey in life. Ain't nobody traveling the exact same path and the exact same footsteps as nobody. I have admired so many people in this world. I have tried to pattern myself after certain people in this world. But no matter how hard I try, I have found no one who has taken the exact same footsteps as me. And that don't make them better than me, less than me. It just ain't no two people taking the exact same footsteps. Look, I admired Richard Pryor. I admired Muhammad Ali. I admired Martin Luther King. I admired Michael Jordan. I admired Gandhi. I admired Mother Teresa. I admire Bishop T.D. Jakes. I admire Bishop Geddes. I admire Joel Osteen. I admire Bishop Kenneth Olmer. I admire Donnie Kirk Kirkland. I admire a lot of people. But their footsteps ain't mine. Not the exact footsteps. I can learn from some things they've all taught me. I can learn from some things I've watched them do. But at the end of the day, this is your journey. Your journey as, is as unique as your fingerprint. And that's how special God made each and every one of us because we all got a different fingerprint. It's billions, over 7 billion people in this world. Ain't no two people got the same fingerprint. So how the two of you gonna take the same steps? You better, you better listen to this. It ain't your journey, it ain't your path. Get on your path, get on your journey, get on your faith, get on your knees and accomplish your job, your dreams. Make your dreams come true. Follow your heart, follow your goals, follow your imagination. God is good and he can get you there. And nowhere does it say a man without an education shall fail. It says a man without a dream or a vision shall perish. Dust them off, handle your business. Those are my closing remarks. Y'all have great and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 